And we should be live now. Oh, that's a bit too fast. There we go. So yeah, today we'll be playing the British 5-3 lineup with the main objective being to drop a 12,000 pounder bomb on an unsuspecting ship. And let's not sit around here for too long. Let's just jump straight into it. Mediterranean port is not a bad map to start on. What do I want to start with though? Let's do Dido. Yes, hello there guys. Action stations, manual posts, engines, flank speed, starboard all. Out of starboard, aye. Destroyer, ahead. It's a bit well, too ahead. quiet the game, I think. Action stations. Enemy spotted. Helm. Mission. That should be better. Down there. That's good to see. Target identified. Destroyer. Ferry. Eight thousand feet. I have seen it, and also that means it's completely completely forgot I wanted to talk about it. But that means the death block cycle has started again next update. So the French Navy is a lot closer than I expected. I really I really need to get on to making that video on the French pre-orders. It is fast, definitely, but it's not unusual. It, it can happen at this time of year. The next update is, is anywhere between late May to early June. And death block starting now is possible, but it's definitely on the earlier side. Why can I not seem to hit this Moffat? Yeah, that, that um, first stuff look being at premium Abrams. At least it is a cool looking vehicle. I don't think it's really all that's well, other than appearances, I don't think it's that special. Though I don't really know my MVTs all too well. Not too sure how good a Lancaster would do against nothing but destroyers. Oh, the um, the boat for the battle pass looks looks interesting. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's an interesting boat for the battle pass. I still think it's a bit of a shame that we've been not seeing nothing but coastal vessels for the battle pass for quite a while now. But the camo for it is pretty cool. Rearward launching torpedo tubes can be interesting, although we'll have to find out if it's useful as when I actually get it. And they do plan on getting it like usual. What am I locked on to? Oh, all the way over there. Oh, 
Well, they can't really add a French coastal vessel for a battle pass if the French Navy isn't here yet. I mean, I'm definitely going to use it. Also because that um, S, what is it, 70-something? Is also a rank 3 premium, and that's just about the rank I still need to grind for the Germans. I still need to get the rank 4 coastals. So that'll make it a very nice addition. I just kind of hope it'll be the same battle rating as the mine layer, you know, 2.7. Because those two, those two in the same lineup would be very neat. Also, that is a polar, so let's uh, try not to anger it too much. I think that's impossible. I think it's firing. No, I think Italian AP actually doesn't have the white tracers, does it? Well, I'm not too sure on that. Let's just call it out for our team because it definitely is as soon as possible. We should be safe from it for the most part now. Whereas in front, I'm not too afraid of that. Kind of worried what captured Alpha. Alps, okay, you don't see many of those around. And that pair was perfectly camouflaged against the side of that cliff. The grind for the bomb was pretty okay because my Lancasters were already spaded. So I just needed one more match in both of them to get the bomb. And I needed to respade those Lancasters anyway because I didn't um, respade them when the EFS came out, you know, the engine fire fighting systems. But it only took me one match to get it. Come on. Heavy cruiser! Port! Four thousand! Hell, hard upon! Enemy destroyed! Shells on target! Engines, flank speed! I have enough spawn points for the aircraft, so I'm just going to rush in with my Dido now. No being conservative, I am rushing in to get the Lancaster. Damage control to repair parties. Pump out flooded compartments. I steer port. Although I'm starting to get the distinct feeling that I might actually not get sunk in my Dido. The crew will object, but yeah. They don't have much choice in the matter, sadly. You know, it might be a good idea to actually leave that Paula alive. Because our capture points are equal at the moment, and I don't think they're going to capture any of the points anytime soon. So I just farm some of these Moffats a bit, and I might just stay out. Get into plane. forward on this Moffat to detonate him, apparently. That'll be too far back now, never mind. I'll oh, JIs and get in the Lancaster. Otherwise I'm just not getting in the Lancaster. Ok, 
Okay, spawn in a cloud, always a good start. Hmm. Okay, I think that's a polar being marked. Over there. Almost through the clouds, I think. I don't really want to lose altitude, though. The bot navy is indeed in full effect. I think this altitude will be fine. Especially seeing as the port is being shelled by high explosive. So it might have lost quite a bit of its anti-air. Thing is though, I have absolutely no idea how to lead ships at this kind of altitude. I should have paid more attention to where the cloud layer was. And if I bomber friendly, I bomber friendly, I think. It'll just be how it is. Oh, this is looking good. Right there. We'll just turn around so we don't get shot down. And we'll follow the bomb in. I think I might have overshot it slightly, but that is looking very good. Straight in the bridge. Straight in the bridge. And by the way, I do have a one second fuse delay on my bomb. Where's the airfield? There it is. Well, that Paula would have most likely just sunk if you, even if I didn't bomb it. Still quite satisfying. And we are currently winning on cap, so I don't need to respawn. Yes, indeed. You could indeed have a 12,000 pound death charge. Enemies capturing B, that's not good. There's a lot of time in this match if I decide to get into another vehicle. I've also got a coastal vessel with me, just in case. But we'll go for a number two with the bomb strikes. A second strike would be fun. I might be going in a bit too fast here for this runway. Although I'm slowing down well now with the gear and flaps. Should be fine. Bit of a bounce, but that will have to do. Some quite bad bounces actually, but oh well. The gear survived. Yeah, I'm not really the best at landing these four-engine bombers. A bit rusty with it. And we are rearmed. Let's see if the Lancaster can actually make it off this runway in one piece. Should be able to. I 
Another chicken owl as well, yes. And I just barely made it off that one way. I don't I don't like the uh, the bally landing technique. And I am indeed using the big boy bomb. It really is quite a hefty payload for this Lancaster. So what is my fuel load on it? It's already minimum load, oh boy. Now after the next bombing run I will have to respawn probably in a coastal vessel to capture A. It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Like just three of those barrel bombs welded together. Might actually be what looks of it. At least a payload of those barrel bombs. Exactly. Or at least that's the plan. But if there's not a, if there's not enough warheads to put warheads on, it's a shame. I see that one destroyer, and there's supposedly still three of them. Well, there's probably the coast there. Okay. So let's put, try and put a 12,000 pound warhead on a forehead, and that forehead being a coastal vessel. That looks like a German S-boat. We're gonna come in low and fast. That is actually, no, that's the Italian Fulguri, I think. Um, we're going to put it right there. No, that's a Jaguar. Splash? Splash. I did indeed just kill a child. Although a Jaguar would have been more than good enough at shooting me down, because that gets VT on its 40 mils. It did not even try to shoot me. I am going to JAD though and get into a coastal spawn. Just so I can get a cap and win this match. There wouldn't be any enough time left to like rearm and come back into the battlefield anyways. He might not have it unlocked, but he could still try and shoot a Lancaster flying at sub 1000 meters. It's going straight for his face. Yeah. I kind of consider myself lucky with the um, British coastal grind because I did it before the naval split and even then it wasn't fun but at least then you had full coastal matches and actual humans to fight no oh, it seems that he went into a BF109 my AP is a primary shell yes HE oh he's closer than I thought he was he was way closer than I thought he was. Well, that's a small bomb, so we're fine. Repair parties, repair parties. Begin damage control. All we have been These 40 mils do not rotate fast enough. And this cannon's hurt. If I can just decap, it'll be more than fine. I got him. All hands, all hands. And I, I decapped a... which was the plan? Could get into a backup, but I don't feel the need to. I'll get an Oleander instead. Because the Oleander also has a recon aircraft and they pretty much don't have any surface vessels left. So let's wait for that recon aircraft to be ready. Hold your health. And we'll just launch it. 
But you know, Faramiles are really difficult ships to spade nowadays. There were already difficult ships back in the day where Coastal was actually fairly populated. But nowadays I can't imagine trying to grind those. This thing doesn't have bombs, okay. It's very possible that that guy... Yeah, I, I see the coastal vessel moving. He respawned in a Jaguar trying to, going to retake A. But I should be able to decap B. If not cap it fully. Well, that's a very small capture point. It's probably going to be difficult. Yeah, you can see him moving on to A again. Yeah. That, yeah, that's exactly the problem. It's just that their ships are mediocre to bad. But, you know, back before the naval split, back when Coastal was actually populated, that wasn't too bad. Here it was a bit of a struggle. It's like, UK Coastal back then is like playing the Italian destroyers now. Difficult, but possible. Oh, we have a friendly actually capturing B. Oh, lovely. So I don't have to do that. I'm going to keep on this way. I do not want to have that option enabled. And put all gunners on all targets. There we go, back to the plane. Our body in the store is capturing B. Not entirely sure what you mean with that uh, Kool Aid heart. Another zone captured, we have the advantage. That is a Jaguar still. I still have one float left, I can still decap. And he shot me down. That was to be expected. Though he should be on... No, they're a bit behind him. The next salvo should be on target if the mountain doesn't block them all. Mountain blocked them. And game's over. No enemy in sight. Battle area clear. Mission completed. The thing with PR206 you have to remember is that's a 4.3 coastal vessel. I think isn't the Jaguar the same PR? Or the Jaguar 37. Pardon me. Jaguar's 4.0. PR2643 was a British at best have a 3 3 coastal vessel. I think the same with the Americans, right? Yeah, 3 3. Oh, like that. I don't think that that'll. Planes, and this will come to your surprise, planes are very powerful in, in War Thunder Naval. It's just that people do not know how to fly them properly. I wish I could give you an easy like, bit of footage to show you, but... Uh, our, you know what? I'll, I'll try and show you whilst I'm still in the hangar. I'll go in a test sail. What am I going to... Um, doesn't actually matter what I go into. I'll go into a test sail, that's not there. And show you how you avoid anti-air. That's realistic battles in the dam. <laughs> Just one second. It is this is realistic. Get into arcade because I'll show you an easy way to well once you understand something about anti-air gunners and naval, you'll find it very easy to dodge them. Uh Tassail Arcade. So we switch off the gunners for a second because I have to show something. That lead indicator. Which of the gunners entirely. The AI gunners 
will always shoot exactly at the lead indicator. But as you can as you see, as a plane is turning, that isn't accurate. What you have to do is actually shoot a bit before the lead indicator. But AI gunners will always shoot directly at the lead indicator. So an easy way to dodge anti-air is by just barrel rolling continuously. Um, I'm trying to think of how I could show it. But yeah, let's let's actually swap to the anti-air, which I am. If I shoot directly at the lead indicator, although that's a bit wrong there. You see that I'm missing quite poorly now. But this is exactly what the anti-air gunners do. They shoot exactly at the lead indicator. Although I'm probably not showcasing it too well because there's a bit of parallax going on. Um, but what you have to do is kind of compensate for it. It's a bit more lead and a bit lower. But the gunners won't compensate for it correctly. They'll always shoot directly at the lead indicator. Um... Is there a way I can show it? Mm. Because I, I would like to try and show it in, in an actual battle, but not a lot of people use anti-air ships in actual battles anymore because bots. Anyways, let's get a count with it. I'll see if I can... You know what, let's see. Do I have an, an attacker that I could put in my lineup? Pretty fast one, maybe the Firebrand. Yeah, I can replace the other two, so that's fine. Yeah, you could have the A1H, but that's the problem, isn't it? You could have it. It's a battle pass vehicle. I'll first spawn Hawkins, because why not? Less HE, more sap. Actually, I could show it how you dodge AA with the fluid pin, couldn't I? Let's try that. What's the battle rating? It's full down here. Destroyer. Well, it's a 5-0 match at least. So we're just going to turn towards B. Gunners on, because actually we'll need them. And we'll launch scout plane. Make sure the ship straightens out again. Because the ship will always do continue the last command you gave it before jumping into the aircraft. Do we have any anti-air ships I could try and mess with? Although preferably you'd go pretty fast as well. The thing with torpedoes in game is that they're really... They don't work like real life torpedoes should work. And that's because they have a... Because in this game you can't like buckle plates, you can't break welds, you can't dislodge stuff with just explosive oomph. The torpedoes actually have a penetration according to their payload. And that penetration is pretty low, all things considered, compared to what payload they have. I think I showed this in another stream, but the Akazuki torpedoes, for example, some of the biggest blue water torpedoes there is with almost a ton of TNT, can I think only penetrate 200 and something? It's not heat. It's not It's not heat um, penetration. It is just that's how much pan that explosive mass has. Like when you look at a bomb in... Um, the bombs on aircraft, it'll show you... Actually, can I... When I click on the Lancaster, when I respawn and get it, every bomb weight has an associated penetration with it. It's the same for torpedoes. So if, the, if it just can't penetrate it with the blast wave, it doesn't do any damage. Also, I was going to try and showcase anti-air, but there's no good anti-air ship around. Do they actually have... They have a cruiser. I see an Eugen. I'm going to use that. Also, this plane is way too slow for... I really wanted to find showcase, but I'll try it anyways. 
Yeah, torpedoes aren't exactly heat, it's just that an explosion's blast wave or whatever it is has a certain amount of penetration. It's just, yeah. Seems my Leander's taking quite a bit of damage. It'll be fine. I'm actually almost sunk. But yeah, I want to try and showcase dodging anti air. So currently I'm still not in range of the anti air as it's leading way below me. But slowly but surely got into anti air range. You always have to keep a good look out on what the tracers are doing. There goes a smaller caliber anti air. So you can see how the tracers are trying to follow my aircraft perfectly, perfectly right. But you can also see that if I just keep doing this, they'll never hit me. Because it's trying to... perfect... Yeah, because it just shoots at the lead indicator for an aircraft and not actually what the aircraft is doing. So in a situation where my aircraft is just doing this, dodging like this, you wouldn't lead as extremely as AI gunners are doing. Because the air gunners can't really aim at anything other than the lead indicator. It's just, yeah. Yeah, my ship is sinking. That's fine. So the ship goes this. So I am going 180 kph. And look at how close I'm getting to these ships. I haven't been hit yet, but that's not that's going to change pretty soon. There we go. So yeah. It was a very slow aircraft, getting, I I want to say, within a kilometer of an Eugen. And it's like, not like an Eugen has very few guns. That's why I always suggest... Okay, that's an interesting book to have. That if you're trying to think of a CAS aircraft for naval, something small, fast, agile and with a decent payload. If you can get that, then you have probably have the perfect cast aircraft for naval. The other option is something fast and... Yeah, something fast, yet has a bomb site. And a very big bomb. Because AI gunners, AI anti-air gunners, have a maximum accurate firing range of, I want to say, 5 kilometers. Although I've heard 4.5, I've heard 5.5. Five, 5 kilometers is roughly the threshold. Any aircraft outside of 5 kilometers, AI gunners will never hit. Period. Just never. So if you're in a big um, medium bomber, for example, a very fast medium bomber, and you fly at, let's say, 4,000 meters, because the amount of drop, you know, the bomb carries the momentum of the aircraft, you usually stay outside of around 5 kilometers. Also, if, if you're getting lag, I am sorry about that. But it should be fine for the most part. I have, so, I have so many videos I can make on Nail, but it just... Mm. Procrastinate, procrastinating way too much. Because you do, you do have a lot of people that think that anti-air firepower is way too good in Nail, but genuinely it isn't. If you know how to dodge it, I've seen people just drop their payloads on an actual anti-air cruiser like it's nothing. I think I've, I've even had it on stream plenty of times where a single aircraft can easily get within range of an anti-air cruiser. Although don't ask me which specific stream that was. Yeah. You don't need that though at the moment. You don't need a squad of planes against a ship to hit a strike on a ship. Would it be cool? Yes, but you don't need it if you're if you are the cast pilot. Well, it could come in handy if you're trying to use an aircraft that isn't fast, agile, and small. Like let's say you're using. A B twenty, no, actually, B twenty six is pretty, still pretty good. A B thirty four, or a B seventeen. Yeah, then you really kind of want multiple aircraft actually get a strike.
Although, again, as soon as you fly over 5 kilometers, you will never get hit by AI gunners. Swordfish, yeah. But I think it's... The, the thing you have to remind, a swordfish is, like, is what, 1-3? You have to think, keep in mind that the actual targets they're supposed to strike in this game at their own battle rating. Which, in that case, would be a PT boat, but oh well. Akazuki. We all want to pull a Bismarck, believe me. But the, the thing is, what I really want to try and do at some point with a group of friends is like get into a navally sea match, and as soon as all four of us can get into a strike aircraft, all four spawn the same strike aircraft, or even in a normal match, I think it'd be kind of fun. But it requires a lot of coordination and a lot of luck. It's kind of more likely to happen in naval EC. Got a Belfast? Oh, they're stuffing. That guy got knocked out. What is these spawn points I have? Nowhere near. But that's fine. Pretty much won this match anyways. Yeah, if you can get a sizable group of um, people in a custom battle for naval stuff, that can get really fun. There's the Eugen. I, God, I'm sorry, Stefan, but I completely forgot about it. I still have it noted down, so I know the title of it, but I completely forgot to watch it. Enemy. Enemy. Starboard. I'll put a reminder on my phone to actually watch it. Or it tomorrow. Isn't you to destroy? I had a Yugo by the looks of it. Engines, all back. I don't see any torpedo trails in the water, and I don't see him launching torpedoes either. Oh, I oh boy. I look too far for torpedoes, but I think that Moffat is going to eat one of them. Not both of them. Uh, I should be fine. Just don't accelerate too crazy. There we go. See, if he didn't respawn right there, I think I wouldn't have been as vigilant of torpedoes. That is right over there. Destroyer, port, six thousand meters. Target identified. Destroyer. The steering gear of it gearing, apparently. Let's repair that very gun. Damage control to station. Put just a bit more firepower. That guy will definitely have launched more torpedoes. So I have to be very careful. Yes, do you launch it on the menu today? Mainly because of Lancaster. With the 12,000 pound bomb. 
That is, of course, if I can get the spawn points for it. Yeah. Where are magnetic torpedoes? In World War II? Not sure. Team's capturing zone A. Lovely. Don't we already have the G7Es? They just don't work like that? Or do we have the G7As? I'm gonna try and duck behind this island in front of me, but let's just check the water for our torps. I don't see any. Yeah, we're the G7As, okay. Like every single German destroyer, I think every single German Blue Water ship has G7As on it. The ones that are armed with torpedoes, of course. Getting bombarded from range by some destroyer, I assume. Destroyer. Yeah, I don't really care about that. Those are all short. Damage control to repair parties. Pump out flooded compartments. Keep it up. The victory will be ours. Starboard. Seven thousand meters. Yugumo got sunk. That was kind of to be expected. Can I sink this Eugen before the match ends? Bit of luck. A lot of luck. Come on. Yes, I still got the kill. Lovely. And we keep going. Actually, no, I was going to show something when it comes to torpedoes, because I know there's a German bomb, almost a thousand kilos of TNT in it, but I keep forgetting which one it is. It's a 1500, I think. Does this one have it? No, it is way higher. Yeah, here you can see explosive mass of 1,700, or well, no, TNT equals is way higher. What is the one normal 1,600? Actually, that's a pretty good comparison. The 600 kilograms of TNT equivalent. Fritz X, I'll check in, in a second, but 600 kilograms of TNT equivalent. Just for a reminder. So actually, let's first look at what the... That's 119 millimeters of PEM. And that is a similar torpedo payload to, I think, the normal long lance. Yeah, that is the similar payload to the normal long lance. I'd, I'd bet to say so 120 millimeters of pen then for the long lance. And Fritz X has how much kilograms of TNT? If I just go to the Grive, because I know for certain that this one has it. 320, that's way lower. Uh, oh, this one is oh, here. 1,000 kilos of TNT is, 200, is 151. That's it. That's all the penetration for 1,000 kilograms of TNT, which is actually a bit more 
naar die Long Lands om die Akizuki. So this is one of the best torpedoes for the Blue Water Tree. Has roughly 150 mils of pen. That's just how torpedoes work. So if, for example, you are a Russian battle cruiser and your belt, if it wants to load, extends that far down. How far down is four meters? Who knows? Like, is, is that already four meters down, that, that part of the of the armor? Or is it, is it below that? What about the Alaska? How far down does that thing's armor belt go? The thing... Armor belts get destroyed by kinetic damage, not by explosive damage, or as far as I remember. So it can deal with an Alaska. Yeah, but only the, only the, the big long lens can deal with an Alaska. If that is four meters down or not, I don't remember. But yeah, the penetration for the explosive mass is pretty low on torpedoes. And not many people know of that. So if you ever launch a torpedo at something and you think, and it says non-penetration, know that the penetration is directly tied to the filler of the, of the warhead. And nothing else. Which is not really how torpedoes worked, but because you can't have the forming damage models in this game, that's just how they work in this game. Mm, I think I'll go Brave Border first spawn, try and get a cap. All hands to battle stations. Engines, flank speed. Well, torp bulges will get destroyed by a single torpedo easily. So if you launch a spread and three of those torpedoes hit a ship with a torpedo bulge, the first torpedo will already knock it out. Hello there, Bill. We were talking about torpedoes. I think what is these torpedo weights? 327, so yeah. Another roughly... 120 mils of penetration. That can't be right. No. That's 600 something is um, 120 mil. So this probably has less than 100 millimeters of penetration. Starboard your helm. Aye, stay starboard. Yeah, the thing is, there's, I, I'm not, I'm just not sure about what ship has belts going lower than four meters. Because I'm willing to bet that the crunch sub belt actually goes down to 4 meters or even lower. Also, I don't think the PKs go that low. But I've seen clips of um, somebody actually torpedoing a crunch sub with 4 meter depth torpedoes and it just did nothing. I'm assuming that its belt goes down four meters. How many spawn points do you get from a cap? A AA guns in a, in a PT boat? You don't. Um, well, AI guns... AI guns don't tend to be too accurate against ships, but it's it's if, if the ship that's shooting you with AI guns has a lot of them, you are not going to survive for very long. Mm, I don't know which has the shortest queue time. Generally don't. If you're looking for the longest queue times, it's definitely coastal hustles. And you're probably going to have a somewhat shorter queue time in arcade as well. Because whilst it whilst to us naval veterans, quote unquote, RB can be a bit more attractive, arcade is still the most played game within this game, no matter what anybody says. Yeah, I don't actually know what has the shortest queue time. Yeah, probably that, yeah. But, I mean five three is doing wonders for me as well, they're not long queues. Ahead of the 
So if I get the second cap, I still wouldn't have enough for this Lancaster, but that's fine. What is my torpedo range? Four and a half kilometers. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, of course, don't, don't, you don't need to be a too cautious or thunder shark. It's just, I kind of forgot about. Of course, you have very early blue water ships in the German tree as well, and they wouldn't have the G sevens. I do have the Z twenty five. I am personally not the biggest fan of the German 6-inch guns on destroyers. I, For destroyers like that, I kind of do prefer fire rate rather than sheer alpha damage. Um, it's a pretty fun boat. But I do have the Z25. It's also just four seven destroyers. Mm. I don't I don't like the six inch guns really on destroyers. They, they pack a good punch, but in in the zombie bot infested meta, you want something that has rate of fire over just alpha strike. Or is it actually no? Z twenty five is four three. I forgot. It's four three. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot that was a Spore 3 ship. I might have to replay it then. I haven't played it in a while. Although it's probably still going to get thrown directly into 5-0. Although you have a good chance of facing 3-3. Three, three. Do we have enough spawn points? I do not. But now we just charge the heavy cruiser, I think. Or maybe just destroyer is over here. Hold your helm. I stay for. Uh, don't worry, I've got the Akazuki as well. I do still like the Akazuki, but it really doesn't do the damage it used to. Still a fun boat though. On this tour. Target identified. These seem stationary. Three six zero. Three thousand meters. So let's fire a torpedo there. There. And there. Oh, that reminds me. Another thing not many people really realize is that torpedoes actually have a dispersion. So, like, if I hover that green area over the ship, my torpedo can hit anywhere from that edge of the green to there. So, if you're launching torpedoes at a ship, especially at close range, try to have the entire ship within the green area, if it's stationary, of course. No, 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 it's not water currents affecting it. It's, well, at the moment my um, my ship is being affected by the wave, so that's throwing me off a bit. But notice just, yeah, there is a dispersion on torpedoes as soon as they launch, they'll go, um... Actually, let's see if I can keep track of it. Let's say still. Let's launch, so Koyama Green is, of course, gone. But I think it's, yeah. I think it's easier to showcase on a launcher with multiple tubes. One destroyer is on the move, the other one behind it isn't, so that's fine. But of course that repeat is not going to miss entirely, that one seems to be still be fine. But 
don't know what the trigger is for these spurs suddenly moving. So I'm just going to get out of dodge. Actually, no, let's get in range. Because that guy's stationary again. They're behind especially. And throw artillery on them. I think artillery has a 2 kilometer range to drop. So let's get a fair bit closer. That guy's just full on the move. I hope the guy, this guy just stays stationary. Let's actually... Let's drop it... There. Torpedo hit. Torpedo sunk. There we go. That guy is definitely not going to hit, hit by many with torpedoes. But I have enough spawn points for the Lancaster now. So we're just gonna rush in. of luck I can still sing this Moffat. Yeah, definitely was on track. Can I I can damage the engines with the AP? And that's another song Moffat. I am just gonna J out to get into the Lancaster. What's the penetration is? 365, okay. So we're going to try and climb, because I think that Eugen there is beached. And Eugen got sunk, but I don't know which one. I think that there is a cruiser. Yeah, that organ has definitely been sunk, so I'm going to try and go for this cruiser here. Preferably I want to climb to 2,500 meters at the very least. I think that's also a cruiser here, actually. I see multiple funnels. Because when I say that they only have a 5 km maximum range, that is of course 5 km in a straight line. The altitude helps, and any horizontal altitude is counted in with it. Depending of course on how far the drop is. So that's B is there. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like 3 km there, away from it. Definitely won't get higher. Also, my WAP kicks in after 2,000 meters of altitude. That is definitely another cruiser there. Uh, and I'm going to go for that cruiser in the front. If it hasn't been sunk by the time I get there. I'm very tempted to drop the bomb in between those two ships. But I'm not confident enough that the splash damage will actually be f big enough to sink both of them. And I think the Moffat in the front has already been sunk. No, it's still firing. We'll let the engines burn a bit. Okay, the Krasnya just opened fire over the 37s, which is bad. Because that most likely means I'm still within anti-air range. Let's open a bomb bay up. We'll just do some minor dodging, because at this range that should be efficient, or sufficient. We'll level off. Get ready for the bomb. And drop it right there. And now we turn away as soon as possible. And follow the bomb in. Ah, I got shot down by the 5 inch GT, but we can maybe still follow this bomb in. It's definitely going to sink the cruiser. I hope. Yes, it did.
And next we'll do Leander. Station. Yep. Enemy spotted. Target identified. Destroyer. Bearing two zero. Nine thousand meters. Bit more lead. I don't think it matters much anymore. game over again. And another kill with the 12,000 pound bomb under the belt. Under our belt. This thing is how the saying goes. And off to battle again. And MNC, that's a good map for a brave border as long as there's no enemy coastals. For Japan. I quite like for Japan. Got some good Engine. ships in it. JDS Ionami, Harukaze, Ionami itself. There's some good strike aircraft to also already have it for a... Yeah, for a Japanese lineup can be very strong if you have the frigate with it as well. Hold your helm. Aye, stay port. If there was anything here, I would have already seen it. That's more exposed than I remember it being, but the cap goes behind the little island. Engines, all astern. I think one of my more recent streams had me playing for o Japan as well. Engines, all stop. I'm going to drift out of the gap, I think. Yeah, I just drifted out of it. That's fine. Engines, all stop. It is very much the case that there are very specific aircraft that work well in naval and aircraft that just don't work at all. Preferably... Preferably you have something fast, and if it has a bomb site, a big bomb, if it doesn't have a bomb site, I hope that it's agile as well. And the faster the aircraft you can have for naval cast, the better. And that's why the Arado is a very popular choice if you have top tier Germany. Dangerous shallows ahead. And the cap actually extends all the way there. Engines, all back. Helm, midships. Helm, midships, aye. Engines, all stop. Engines, all stop. By the way, I noticed from, um... But I remember just, um, I was re-watching a clip from the Wednesday stream, and I noticed that the audio on my end was, um, how was it? Yeah, I noticed that the audio was out of sync with the visuals. 
So if anybody notices stuff like that happening on the stream, please tell me, because I'm not actually aware of what is happening to my actual stream for most of the time when it comes to sound-wise and visual quality. There should be enemy destroyers coming down here, I think, and I want to plan and ambush it. So if, if audio and visuals get out of sync again during this stream, do tell me. Because there are some things I want to try and see that will help it. There's USS Frank Mox. Nice. I I really need to work on my coastal trees. I've had somebody I don't fail to remember it was, but somebody asked me ages ago to try and review Hawkrium, but I just have not have never been getting around to actually try and get us. And these are just there's no rocks in between here and there, okay. Uh, let's launch a relatively narrow spread. Like this. And turn away. That's another thing, you'll often see tracers like glitching through the rocks. And you think, oh no, they're going to hit me through solid objects. Purely a visual bug. So you ever see shells just clipping through a, a rock or a mountain? That's just visually. It shouldn't damage you. Or at least I've never had it happen that it damaged me. Helm, midships. Which bomb is that? Is that the AP bomb, Thunder Shark? Engines, all stop. Because AP bombs don't work in this game. What might happen if you see like a bomb actually go into your deck and with a delay and then detonate afterwards? Somebody might have just put a bomb delay on their bombs. Because the AP bombs... I should actually try them again, but I do not believe they work. Like actual AP bombs yet. Shoot. Try and get uh, my spawn points. Or I can torpedo him, that's also fine. So I should have these spawn points, and we are going to use those spawn points immediately. On this map, the um, bots tend to just collide with this central island here. So if we can find a big cluster of them, maybe drop in between them, that'd be great. Although, is that a cruiser? More specifically, a polar. Yeah, you can see them getting a bit clustered up there. But if that is a pole or an organ, I'm going to bomb that first. There's a Graf's... We had an HMS Tiger and a Graf's Bay. Well then. That must be the Spay. It's good to know because the Spay doesn't actually have the greatest NTR, although it does have 105s when I think of it. There was an enemy Trento abound. I just think was that cruiser. I can see the candy cane from here. Yeah, the Tiger is a pretty mediocre light cruiser, but it's it's a cruiser I'm sad to have missed out on. Because it's a genuinely unique vessel. It is definitely the spear. 
Dodo is one of five, so it's a blind spot I can think of. Not immediately. Although with a bit of luck, those one of fives are not armed with TF. Also, we all know what the direct impact of HE does to an aircraft. Mm, is this really the target I want to bomb? Is there no more val other valuable targets? Nope. Space is definitely the most valuable out there. Those one of fives are getting close, so I need to dodge. Oh boy. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good at all. Come on, aircraft. Come on. Yeah, no, this is not going anywhere. Can I bomb another ship then? Maybe? Come on. Ditch the bomb. Because I have no control anymore. And back to cruiser we go. Bomber, ahead. 9, meters. So, hey, where are you? There you are. And the Lancaster isn't exactly the... Even though it has a really big bomb, it just isn't fast enough with that bomb to really be useful. Well, it's more than useful enough, it just isn't fast enough to get it, make itself safe. Because a slower bomber means that the bomb also drops way closer underneath the bomber. You have to get closer to your target. Definitely didn't guess anybody with a bomb did I? Nope. That dispersion on these guns is something, man. Or actually, that might have just been a visual bug, that dispersion. Because none of those shells should have hit his guns, but definitely something did. Yeah. A weapon that's surprisingly effective is the tiny Tim rockets if you use them to if you like dive bomb with them. Because then you don't really have to account for the drop of them. What is this spay shooting at, if anything? Okay, now he's gonna shoot me, that's for sure. Was he shooting before? Now the guns are not aiming at me anymore. That should be the doom. Let's pay. Two, four, zero, 
I will see exact same two guns again. Let's repair those again. Got set on fire immediately, yes, of course. Automatic. I don't think you do much of heat rockets, but I haven't tried it myself yet, that's for sure. And ships. Damage control to stations. Yeah, because it's same wing turret again. And that's Lugger that needs sinking. Yeah, you could maybe knock out some big turrets of heat rockets. As long as they have the pan. Might, against a destroyer, those will do some damage, yes, but against anything bigger, not much. Unless it's a really a lot of mighty mice. That's an army recon plane, I see. I think. There's a third plane. I don't care much about that. Somehow knocked out of Frank Knox. Fine, I guess. Yes, enemy routed. Report for Apparently another battle pot reward. Oh, do we have anything interesting to get? A booster, but I don't need a booster at the moment. I could get a tank ammo. So why not? Nice, oh, got a camouflage for that 75. That's useful. Because I do actually plan to use that thing fairly recently. I'm just going to quickly check out what that camo actually was that I just got. And there we go. So that's autumn camo, right? Yeah, that is pretty neat. That is a desert camo for it. Very neat. And back to some more British boats. And Fago Islands again. We spawn the Brave Border. Just to get the caps and then do something to get a Lancaster. Secure the ship for sea. Engines, flank speed. Another sort of problem with the Lancaster for this kind of stuff is, is the um, this map is kind of small, and the Lancaster does not climb fast with twelve thousand pounds of ordnance loaded. I 
I'm starting to think I should really increase my altitude to 3,000 meters before trying to strike something. Hold your helm. Aye, stay port. Destroyer. That's the thing, you don't want to dive bomb something that's big and not agile, because then AI gunners will tear you apart. Dive bombing, you're doing something that's fast, so you can dodge AA fairly reasonably. The AA cap is actually right there, so let's go around a little bit. Of an island, but I don't. No enemy PTs as of yet. That is not how fast the Lancaster goes. The Lancaster goes 250 with a bit of luck, or 12,000 pounds strapped to it. In a dive, it might reach 500, sure, but I will never get out of the dive going 500. But I might have to side climb in my Lancaster for a bit. I spawn it. I mean, I'm fine with a one way ticket in the Lancaster, but then I'd actually try, well, love to hit something. Because as soon as your wing rips off, you, you can no longer aim that bomb. You're already lost. And the wings on the Lancaster are pretty wide and not that difficult to hit. Destroyer, a stern, a thousand meters. A destroyer astern at a thousand meters, so it's a land based destroyer, is it? Hmm. Let's see it, Lancaster. Yeah. Doesn't go that fast. I don't know what the rip speed is of Lancaster, but it's not going to be that high. Destroyer, ahead, five thousand meters. At least in the meantime, I'm getting some RP for the British coastals. Good thing I look behind me. Not ah, it was an AI. Okay. As a buzz, so I'm not quite sure what the person was trying to do with that torpedo launch, but yeah, it being an AI, AI makes sense. Repair station. We are critically damaged. Port your helm. I stay port. And that's already not spawned for Lancaster, but I'm going to get that second cap. Also, do I? No, I'm. You know what? I'm not going to get the second cap. Because I do not need it. If anything, getting the second cap would just give me less time to side climb. But now that there is a, an AI in the field, I do not want to fly over the coastal spawn. Yes, to a certain extent it will help counter the waves, but it won't be perfect if the mines just aren't fast enough. But it should help, yes. That's a very big cluster of ships I do not really want to fly into. Although I do see a cruiser at the rear. We see a lone destroyer here and there. But I kind of want to... S oh, no, no, no. We see a destroyer going for B. That's definitely priority target number one. I think I did just saw it explode, so it might not be long for this earth, but we are going to bomb that first. And let's try a slight dive to gain some speed. Let's keep the pressure on. Now, is the destroyer going to accelerate as soon as he caps? I am going to bomb just in front of him, there, in case he accelerates. 
and hope that the blast damage is long enough in case he doesn't accelerate. Can we turn around to get out of AA range? We follow the bomb in. It is, not ex it is accelerating. It's a cruiser, is it an Amden? No, it's a destroyer, it's a German destroyer. And we still blew it up. The bomb was practically nowhere near it, but it still blew it up. And our base is over to the right. And now we should have more than enough time to land and rearm. There are some soul targets out there still. Yeah, a hole breaks you only really see a very big explosions in blue water. to see if he spawned in anything else. What is the guy who bombed? He's still in the game. He's no longer in the game, so it doesn't matter. We don't have to worry about him spawning a PT but to catch Alpha. Charlie's most likely not going to get captured by these bots, so that's not really a problem. Portland, okay. That might be one of the cruisers out back there. I'm definitely going to try and bomb those cruisers with the next one. Let's see if it can be a bit smoother with this landing. Yeah, it's still a little bounce, but better than the last one. I have not seen that now. I'm not really following that game too much, until I maybe can get my own hands on it. But you can't really compare gameplay from that game to War Thunder anyways. Well, to the PC version of War Thunder, of course. A flight of the video in it? I'm, I'll um, see it. Yep. Yeah, I got the recall seagull decals. It fits well on British bombers. Even more so if I'm using them in naval. We are in the air. Keep it up. The victory will be ours. And now we have to try and climb again. That cruiser is going to be my target here. Yeah, 
Maybe try and level off and just gain some speed before climbing. I'll definitely try and um, look at that video then, Nick. After uh, this. I mean, if, if you're willing to play 5-3 Sky, sure. That's fine. Just, of course, note that there won't be a, a VC of sort of any kind. Cruisers. I think that's two cruisers over there. That's a Halana, isn't it? Like the one in the middle? No, an Atlanta. Ha. Huh. The thing with Atlantas is they're anti air cruisers, but only if you allowed. only if you want to be an anti air cruiser in them. Because either a player uh, manually controls a 5 inch gun to try and shoot in a plane, or it has to switch to the other battery to let the AI do it. I'm getting shot at by that thing. That's not good. That's not good. Ah, there goes my wingtip again. And we know what happened the last time I lost my wingtip. I think I just stay out because I just can't control this plane with one wingtip. And of course, it's the AI shooting me down. <laughs> Those. AI ships, man, they're, le they're more lethal of an than the normal players are. For some reason. I'm, I'll maybe send this, this scout plane towards B to decap it. There we have our enemy. But yeah, the Lancaster, from what I've now experienced, not the best platform for the big bomb delivery. And now he gets shot down, of course. Well, sunk rather. Let's launch the plane. Okay, that should be fine. Starboard your helm. I steer starboard. I'm gonna like, take fire from cruisers, I don't really like that. I'm also taking fire from the Atlanta. Which is even worse. Sure, but yeah, it's it's more just a lack of of climbing that that really hurts the um, Lancaster for naval bombing. Also, I'm not going to win this fight against Atlanta. Just straight up. And why is my plane going there? I wanted to get for B. So I'm probably just going to let my um, cruiser suffer. I'm capture B in the meantime. We are damaged. It's fine. Throttle again. There we go. A little more effort and victory will be ours. Big enough where I don't have to worry about. My connection is doing funky business again, which should be fine. I was about to say, this cap should be big enough for me to not worry about just overshooting it. Yeah, I know, that's why I didn't leave. The second strike of a Lancaster is going to be very difficult to pull off. 
I'm I'm not going to Sky. I'm not going to. Although I know it's just a. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to. I'm to you. Hmm. Yes. Toasty. Ours is fire, it's a bridge, okay. Yeah, I am surprised I actually get, get that much crew. taken off again let's put it on orbit mode so it doesn't fly off the map let's go into orbit mode it has okay that's fine target identified heavy cruiser ferry one six zero Destroyer ahead, I'll keep it in mind. Although I didn't see any ahead. Shells on target. Target identified. Light cruiser. Very. One four. Enemy vessel sunk. Okay. Target identified. Destroyer. Free kill, I guess. I still don't understand quite what the behaviors for these bots are. I got Atlanta was still more than fine. I just left. I love how one of my shells took out one of his guns, but not the third. It is quite impressive. Hello there, Trill. And welcome to another boat, bro boat broadcast. We've been having some success with the Lancaster's big bomb. Also, that aircraft really isn't up. Up my alley when it comes to naval strikers. Just a bit too big and lumbering. Sure thing. Slowly making my way to the black pool. Well, then I still have to get the HMAS arrow at some point to complete my tech tree. This is such a weird ship to be a 2-7. I think like a similar ship in the American tree is at what? Uh, Kimkui 3 3. Although the Kimkui does have two more twi dual 20 mils. 
Not that it really helps that much. In the meantime, I'm going to eat Sky and invite. Just in case. Yeah, I am. I'm fully anticipating that HMS HMAS arrow is not going to be fun because it's just you know a forty mil boat from a two seven with nothing else and it's painfully slow. If if this was still the days that coastal was actually populated, you know, like before the naval split, fine, it would have been a fine ship, but we're no longer in that time. It's just going to be pain and suffering. Let's go for 38. At least it's faster than the Kim Kui. I really don't like this ship. I really don't. Rank 3. And what's a British boat? Is it a rank 3 as well? It's a rank 4. Oof. Mmm. 10,000 RP on a boat that's constantly going to face destroyers of a single 40 mil. 10,000 RP for this modification. Yikes. Oh, actually, that reminds me how close am I getting to camos for these ships? Quite a ways away because I haven't been playing them too much. No, no, it's not modifications, it's gear stabilization. Yeah, no, that's a long shot away. And of course, I currently have the lighting in the hangar where I can't actually see these cameras, so that's fine. Just still waiting on a skyscraper to join us. Oh, the Hawkins has a torpedo belt. That's fun. It's good to know. Do the other cruisers in my lineup have one? No. So the British tech screen still needs quite some stuff done. The things I really want to finish up the, the um, coastal tech trees, but it's such a pain. It is just suffering. Skyprice has joined. I'm going to hold off of the German ones because they're getting a new rank 3 premium with the battle pass. I want to like the 12 for 12, but I just don't. I just don't. And two of four is within reach. Mm. Yeah, the, the Russian coast is probably one of the better trees. Although the heyday of the armored barges has gone past as well. The more I think back on the naval split, the, the less I like it, man. But yeah. The M1 is 5, still 5, 7. It really did. And, well, it did for Coastal, it didn't for Blue Water, but it, Blue Water is fine still for research. Like, it, was it really even that difficult before? I'm, I'm trying to remember the grind before the naval split for Blue Water, but I just don't remember it. Although I don't remember it being that bad. Okay. Ex yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking as well. Like my thinking is that they'll they'll go with battleships, maybe carriers for blue water, right? And then into modern cruisers and modern just like 
the really bigger modern stuff. But then for the blue water, you can have all the modern frigates, modern destroyers, even the smaller ones. And submarines could be put well in coastal as well. Because I have no clue what they're going to do with rank 6 coastals. Uh, we are first spawning Brave Border to get the caps. All hands to battle stations. Engines, flank speed. Air attack alert. Target identified. Light cruiser. Yeah, missile boats is another thing. But again, yeah, modern submarine, modern not submarines, frigates. And technically speaking, we already have a modern destroyer in the coastal fleet, but that's a bit of a weird case. Port your helm. I steer port. Light cruiser. Port. Seven thousand meters. Looks like a mix of like six O and well, mostly five O's. Nope. Starboard your helm. Nope. Enemy BT boat. Destroy the target. Over there still. Oh, that was easy. And I already have no spawn points for the Lancaster. I don't want to spawn it just yet because the anti air presence of the enemy team is at the highest at the moment. So I'm going to try and sneak onto Bravo maybe. Um, is the stream still alright? Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Because for a second I saw no connect, no connection to the to the win, you know, the YouTube window for streaming. That was very concerning. Okay. That might be a player moff, seeing how fast it got there. Although we don't have that many moffets, do we? Enemy has a Kuchizov. How on earth are we going to get close to Kuchizov? Kuchizov is not going to be fun to deal with. Because Kuchizov has quote unquote sea whiz. I don't know how to get close to that. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna yeet my brave border out there. Maybe try to sneak on the sea. Maybe. Light cruiser, starboard, four thousand meters. Yeah, it is. It, it coastal can be. Out of the two game modes, you can clearly see that they designed the game mode for coastal. Genuinely. Let's 
Yeah, I know this hell of boys on C, but I'm gonna try it anyways. The Battle Pass German bullet has eight. Four torpedo tubes with a reload each. From what I could see on the death blog at least. Does it only have six? I thought it had eight. I have to double check. Is it only the plus? I could have sworn I saw two, like, the torpedo reels for the rear tubes as well. But I might have been wrong. That's a big old cruiser. We've captured most of the strategic zones. Starboard your helm. It's a Helena as well, oh boy. This really isn't going to be easy when it comes to bombing them. I'm gonna just launch a small spread at the Eugen. Because I do not believe he's going to accelerate too much. Let's do a spread in the rear sector. We are artillerying this Moffat, which I believe is going to be there. As well as 40 millimetering the engines. Artillery strike seems to be good. Yeah, the RT strike is good. Probably not good enough, but it was good. And kill assist, perfect. Still have one torpedo left. The hip got sunk, that's good. I lost my bridge, that is less good. So I'm just gonna steer right into this beach. And there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, luckily I didn't actually beach myself, I just hit a rock. Is Halani going to stay still? I don't know, but I'm just going to launch the torpedo, assuming it will. I still have depth charges if that Omaha is still around the corner. But I believe that I'm going to get the gun down by 20 mils. Head to the bridge again, but I'm still in control. Those are big guns, but they're over. Can I survive the onslaught of 20 mils? Ah, God. Enemy has a J-188 up. Okay. But I'm going to go for the big bomb. I will say with the next update actually getting closer than I um, thought it would be, I am really curious if they're going to add rank 6 for the French naval tree. So there's a wounded Helena, there's a... I think... Oh, actually, what is that in the back? I'm not too sure, but it's a wounded Helena, a crippled Omaha. And that's it, basically. Hawkins, that's... Actually, Hawkins might be something I can target. Although I have to fly past the Helena to get it. Yeah, I know the Leipzig, I saw that. Leipzig is alone, so that would be a valuable target. I see my torpedo heading for the Helena. Still seems on course, but I think the Helena is the Helena is still afloat. It looks severely damaged. 
Omaha, I don't want to bomb because I think it's just going to go down any second. Holland is about to get hit by my torpedo. So the Hawkins or the Leipzig are a well, good target for me. The Holland is eating my torpedo. It's getting sunk by my torpedo. I think the Leipzig, because it's closer, will be the target of choice. The Leipzig, however, is moving at full speed. Probably an actual player. Those are the 37s opening up on me. So we'll just do some loose evasive maneuvers. He's slowing down, but I have to give appropriate lead because of my altitude. He's turning out as well ever so slightly. Let's say there. Turn the bomber all around. And we'll follow the bomb in. Ooh, that might be good enough. No, he's accelerated way faster than I thought he would. Although that might still detonate his rear turrets. It did. And that is mission accomplished. Yeah, I was going to look at that BP German boat. Because I got sworn it would have has reloads for all the torpedo tubes. Yeah, that was a good, uh, good way to finish it. So let's take a look at it. Yeah, no, the, the German um, BP reward has a reload for the rear torpedo tubes as well. Visible clear as day on the dev blog notes. And this guy's ready again, so off we go again. Coastal spawn first again. Yeah, if, if you have hopes like that, that's you don't know, this is always going to be a disappointment. I'm not going to lie. I just want more new ships. Like, I really want them to just get on with moving top tier naval along. Because the last top tier ship we got was Fuso, and that didn't actually push any boundaries, it's just adding another 14 inch battleship. Um, when, when was the actual last. Yeah, the Hood, I guess, was the last push for top tier ships? The Hood and Byron? That's been a while now. So I'm getting shot from that direction. I think by the destroyer. Yeah. Destroyer. Bearing 360. 5, meters. Engines all back. Yes. Yeah, we haven't had any actual like push for the upper boundary for naval ever since the hood and Bayern. I'm really trying to think of what else. We had some additions that really filled up the battleship gaps, that's for sure. The Fuso was a nice addition. Nevada was a nice addition. Twilio was a nice addition. Destroyer. Starboard. 4,000 meters. Helm. Midship. Helm midship. Aye. Taking automatic gunfire, but it should be fine at this range. I say the shell just landed right next to me. I'm gonna use this island, I'm gonna ambush them. 
because I'm not going to make that that gap to the cap. I already know it. Vulnerable from that side though. That shouldn't be too bad. I'm just marking that guy for artillery, possibly. Oh, he's way out there. Oh, he shouldn't be. There he is, and he's following that post, so we're just gonna bombard there. I underestimated his speed, so I think my artillery strike is going to be missing. I'm not going to try and torpedo some of these cruisers over here. So I'll try that next. Speaking of torpedo targets. That's a really juicy one. We're going to launch two torpedoes at it, one a bit forward, one back. Well, this one forward wasn't really forward, it was just at the lead indicator. Next target will be that Azni. And I do not want to go around this side, around the right side of there, because then I'll go head on with that cruiser and it'll just make it more difficult for my torpedoes to find a target. So go around this side of the island. So I have a more perpendicular approach at it. I think perpendicular is the correct word. And then torpedo this Krasny. And away we go. I will say the, the, there are some things about the aiming system that are very intuitive if you've played naval for quite a while, but not so much if you're not familiar with what the old system used to be either. Because all the new aiming system is, and I can't say this enough, is just the old aiming system with a new coat of paint. All they did was change the feedback you got from it, not how it actually worked mechanically. One torpedo hit. I hope the rear one actually hit him as well. Doesn't seem like it. I'm planning on charging this destroyer with depth charges. Actually, I don't need to. He's already solo crew. I can just get him down. Yeah, he's down. This destroyer, maybe? Caliber gunfire. Frank Knox got taken down by Sky. God damn it, Sky. I was about to torpedo that. that I'll depth charge him. Uh, do we have another target? We have the cruiser as a target. Ignore the low caliber fire. Damn it. The Grosso got me. But a torpedo found a Moffat. Good. Not enough spawn points. Shame. Starboard, your help. I stay starboard. Let's keep the pressure on. Victory is close. If anything, I think I actually prefer the older aiming system because it actually gave you the correct feedback for what you were doing. Because, for example, here, 
The green thing is, is where the shells are supposed to hit, right? But you moving it up and down is not really what you're doing. Like you using the scroll wheel to adjust the range is not what's making the circle go up and down because doing this and that will also make the circle go up and down. It's, it's part of the old video I did in the aiming system, but what you're adjusting is the range at which your guns are converging. And the green indicator is, I think, only for the front gun, like the shell impact for where the front gun is going to hit. Of course, that's where it's going to hit without any momentum taken into account. Yeah, really, what what they should have done is I'm going to just fire one more salve and shoot. Or never mind. In controls for naval weaponry, I think no here. It isn't weaponry. Mouse wheel distance correction. That's that isn't the default for some reason, and that it's awful. Granted, in arcade you don't need that setting, but it is vital for realistic battles. I do have enough for I do have enough for Lancaster, so I'm going to jail and take the Lancaster. Which is a bit of a shame to do in a cruiser like that, but it should be fine. God damn it. Dear little why are you spending so much money? But anyways, yes. Blowing up stuff. Blowing up destroyers in a single cell is always satisfying. Although, those torpedoes are looking juicy against our friendlies. Those two rear ones might hit something. Mm, I need to be climbing. Uh, there is a PT boat about to attack our heavy cruiser. I think it's an LS3. I cannot help because I will sink the friendly heavy cruiser if I bomb him. And indeed, those torpedoes found a mark. Um, we have a Krasny over there, we have a wounded Karlsruhe, and I think I'm going to go for the wounded Karlsruhe. It is... the aiming system definitely is a block of entry for new players. Also, I did not notice that ship right there, and his anti-air is very concerning. Oh, I need to be... Oh boy. You know what, I'll drop it. Because I'm so confident in the bomb. So just fly away. Now, of course, I did drop the bomb next to him, hoping that he wouldn't accelerate. And it didn't seem he did. And did the bomb kill him? It did, anyways. And it missed by quite a fair bit. That is, that is absurd. That seems to be the airfield. That's also the um, the annoying part I find about the naval split. Playing coastal to start off with is the best way to learn a the aiming system. Also, I need to do something about the chat overlay. Exactly. Yeah, I uh, I need to do something about the fact that it's a special message. Well, thank you still for paying for it, even though that's really not necessary. Um, it shouldn't be staying on the screen for that long, so I'll have I'll have to figure it out. I also think I'm going to just change the um. Gonna change the um, font of the text as well, it appears. But yeah. Yeah, I really like before Nails, but Ghost Coastal was easily the, one of the best ways to learn how to aim. Because you had auto cannons, pretty visible tracers, and the ranges weren't that absurd that you could still, like, 
If you're firing an auto cannon and you adjust the range, you see what your adjustment is doing. So it was really easy to try and get used to, okay, I have to try to shoot that much under a target, that much over a target when it's getting closer, further, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm so... Like, at the time, I also didn't realize that the, that the naval split was going to be really that big of an effect on, on how the grind goes and the experience of play, people with naval. But it really is... <laughs> Also, it really did, it definitely did introduce more players to, to naval, because it could jump straight into destroyers. But at the same time, those players had a worse experience when it came to learning how to play naval. Also, this is going to... Oh boy, how am I gear not broken? <laughs> oh. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. But yeah. As I was saying, it's... yeah. I kind of got the feeling that the naval split was a bit of a rush decision, a bit of a decision they didn't want to make. But oh well. It is what it is. Oh, it was. Yeah, after the split, naval veterans had a field day with the new people and destroyers. It, it was, oh, just absolutely. It was just. It was seal clubbing to the nth degree. But that's also the thing before the split. When you before the split, when you were playing coastal and you faced a destroyer, you knew that that person knew what he was doing. You knew that he knew the basics. Nowadays, if you see a reserve destroyer captain, you can be pretty. You can just sail up to it in most of PT boats and not get hit by them. It's it's shocking. But back in the day, destroyers were really terrifying. To even more terrifying than they are now to coastal vessels. I kind of missed that element of it. Yeah, I'm just, uh, at the time I was kind of not too opposed to the naval split, but as time goes on I'm just more and more disliking it. Because a lot of stuff really got lost in it just so you could get destroyers a bit faster. Okay, a fair bit faster, but still. The price for that was not, was not, was not, mm, not appreciated at the time. I need to gain altitude, and how am I going to do that with 12,000 pounds of ordnance? There's not that, ami that many hostiles left anymore. I see a destroyer. There are on paper. In practice there aren't many. The only the only coastals that can actually fairly deal with destroyers one on one are, are frigates. Down like this will throw off the gunners as well because again they're shooting directly at the lease indicator and they're bomb away not repeat away but bomb away and i get shot down but that's fine because ordnance is away it is a groza but that's fine and it got evaporated Go to Leander. Light cruiser ahead, twelve thousand meters. Action station, enemy spotted. Yep. Okay, all that was that was something. Sunderland, really? Target identified. 
I'm gonna launch the plane again to maybe capture Bravo. The sky seems to be going to sea. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next update. I, I genuinely hope they're going to do something big with the French Navy being introduced. If they don't, that's a giant missed opportunity. And I really should not be getting my hopes up like this. I mean, you are being in the, you are in an Atlanta sky. It's not that difficult to be a menace in an in an, in an Atlanta. Oof. Is that a coastal vessel I see? Or was it the wreck of one? What is this? Ah, oh, this... Hmm... Something suspicious. I think it was just a. Uh, I saw Pier 183 get destroyed, so it might have just been the wreck of it doing some funky stuff. Okay, let's try to not crash into the water. plane is this actually? Because I keep forgetting what the plane is. Osprey, okay. Oop. We're fine. For now. Yeah. I saw you post quite a few videos with, it, with Japan recently. I should check them out. But there. I honestly believe that the Japanese coastal tree is up there with Italy as one of the best. Genuinely. And all of that because although they actually changed the BRs of some of those really good ships, god damn it. But they used to just jump from 2-3, which is like the limit where you want to play coastal to 3-3 three, three, with a really good vote well a pretty good coastal vessel and frigates that's perfect it's so, such a shame they moved these up to 2-7 although it's probably well deserved because those 40 mils really are dangerous especially combined with the 25 as the secondaries but there goes the perfect 2-3 lineup And off we go again. For hopefully another Lancaster kill with the 12,000 pounder. Norway, a good map for a coastal to get two caps on. Prepare the ship for battle. Engines, flank speed. Port your helm. I stay we just have to be very careful of enemy coastals. But luckily we haven't really run into many of them yet. Helm, midships. Helm, midships, aye. This should be a free cup. Is there any coastals over there? 
Well, that I can see. Engines, all stop. The light forces have captured a zone. Off we go. To capture Bravo. And probably get enough spawn points. Well, we'll never get enough spawn points with just the two caps. But then we'll just rush into the enemy destroyers and get ourselves the Lancaster. Seems like a purely 5-0 match for our side at least. Well, 5-3 of course. But all the bots seems to be 5-0. Hold your helm. I stay poor. Dangerous shallows ahead. Thank you. The victory is near. I'm already trying to think what I'm going to do on Monday. Actually, I remember what I was going to do on Monday. Somebody asked to do Fritz X, maybe. We might try and grind a Fritz X by Monday over the weekend. Because I do actually want to try those bombs as well. I have never used them. don't have any... Well, I have aircraft with them, but I've never unlocked them. Now just a good few more hits and we'll get the Lancaster. Yeah, that's why I really want to try and get one of the Fritzaks. Although I'm not sure if I want to play that its own BR or if I want to up there to a higher BR. Starboard, your helm. Yeah, of course. Because aren't there like fairly low BR planes with them? Like the 111 with them, isn't that the 3 something? Because if it's a 3 something and using a Fritz X against reserve destroyers might be actually be pretty fun. You have a bit overkill. 2 7? Ooh, even better. I'll check it out again after this match. Target identified. Light cruiser. Bearing three, six, from A. Five thousand meters. Light cruiser. Starboard. Six thousand meters. Starboard I need to find something to shoot so I can actually get my spawn points. Uh, enemy cruiser is over there. Can I torpedo him? No, he's just out of range. Okay. Oh. And I am five spawn points short of a Lancaster. Hmm. Let's spawn the Dido. Yeah, I don't have the 177 though. Is the thing. I do have the, I do have the 111. If that's 2-7, that sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah, I might just play the 2-7 like Ghost lineup for Germany and just take the 111 with me. Or should I wait until I get the... Until the battle pass actually unlocks. I think I should wait. I 
then what else am I going to do on Monday? I think I'm probably going to try grinding some actual ships again on Monday. Mm, not the Germans, because they've only done that Wednesday. Italians, maybe? I should probably finish off that three off. That's what played the dreaded coastals. I don't really want to J out because I, if I can sink a few more of these Moffats, that's a reduction in anti air threat. I could do Soviet Coastal. That's right. Mm, this is the Coastal I want to do though. Yes and no. Like on the one hand, any progress towards the coastal tree isn't is is nice, and I've got Japan Japanese and Italian coast fully done. I kind of want to get the British frigates, but at the same time, like the Whitby, the premium one is really might really be worth it, but then I'll, I'll have to wait for the sale, and it's not going to get on sale until not. Yeah, it won't be old enough to be on sale for the next one, I think. Or it might be. I should really do the Americans. Because I do have the Douglas as well, which I can use, but the Douglas is not a good grinding premium. I think I'm going to try the US script with the Coastals. Because I really need to finish them. Um, yeah. I'm quite a big fan of frigates in general. And that thing having... Okay, it only has one turret, but it's a 3-7. Which is... Pretty good. Although only having one turret can be quite a pain. Trio is a really rough PR for Coastal Blades, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. What I could do is just play um, Duo Coastal and Below for fun. Okay, shall, shall we go for Lancaster? We'll go for Lancaster. Because I do have enough spawn points for it. I was, I was thinking of doing it anyways. There we go. We'll get in the mag we'll try and drop a mega cookie. If we can get close enough for one, that's a different question, but we're gonna try it. I have gotten some successful um s well successful kills with it already. If you want to rewind the vodok, although they're not you know the timestamps for them of course. There's a okay. The internet connection still fine. Please help. Okay, we're still fine. That that's that's also the other major gripe I have with the naval split. Is the fact that you cannot research one of the other anymore. That is really, really annoying. Really high enough to really target it again. Let's keep the pressure on. Victory is close. But yeah, if if you had a completed tech tree and then some research carries over to the um, to the other branch, that would be so nice. Also, I'm kind of paranoid about that. This stream of anti-air fire coming up my way. Which is going to be bomb away soon against this cruiser, which I believe is the Krasny. Let's see if we can penetrate all the way through to the Eugen. That's not the Eugen. That's the Krasny. Bomb away. It's 
So I will fly away. I'll follow the bombing. That's looking good. Uh, that's a bit far away, but the blast will do it. Uh, I've got a BT back up, yeah. You will have to deal with that PT-20. Uh, where is it? Oh, the PT-20 is heading towards C. It is there. I can see. I can see the wake from it. Where is the airfield? It's over to my left. What happened to the Eugen? Is that actually the Eugen there? It looks like another Krasny to me. I could have sworn there was one. Oh, it is just us left. Okay. Um, I'm most likely not going to get another strike off, so we'll just stay out. It'll be more important to get a PT, but. But we got one cruiser with it. But this is my last ship spawn now, though. Port your helm. I steer port. Target identified. Direct hit. Enemy destroyed. Helm midships. Helm midships. I. Let's keep the pressure on. Victory is close. The Hawkins has been doing all right for me at the moment. Oh, Dapper wants to join. We can we can add Dapper if you can invite him. Um, Sky. Yeah, the Hawkins has been treating me kind of all right at the moment. It's it's not the best ship, and it's a five three for a reason. It's not, it's not too bad. I'll play it in my next spawn again, my next match. Creaky chair. Being creaky. Engines, all stop. Most of the zones are under control. I have not played Glorious ever since I spaded it, so I would not know. Air attack alert. Enemy destroyed. Set course for base. Yeah, can you invite Dapper Sky? I do not believe I have my friends list. I do not. I, again, I have not played any 15-inch guns since then, really. Um, okay, I'll, I'll just make you leader for a second. There we go. It's just with 15-inch guns, they're kind of inaccurate. And they'll just overpen any single cruiser, if you're if they're brought it onto you. So when you're using the 15-inch guns on Glorious... You have to actually shoot at Bowen cruisers, which is very counterintuitive. But that is what you have to do. Oop. I was made squad leader. We could move up to 5-7. Although I think he's swapping out it all to 5-3, yeah. And I'll be doing two more matches then. Because it is getting quite late. Yeah, we'll, at least we'll get to the three hour mark then. Off we go. The Glorious is just a bit of a weird ship. 
Although I will say, once you get the sap on the um, secondary guns for Glories, it can be quite alright. That, that those 4 inch guns will work quite well for you. They'll do a lot of damage. Although they lack the penetration to deal with any armored cruiser, like the Russian ones. But they can deal appropriately with the American ones. Volcanic Island is a pretty good map. And I am going to first spawn Hawkins. Prepare the ship for battle. Engines, flank speed. Is Phoenix snapping us again? Yes. That is fine, since he's now in my squadron, he can never be the enemy. Damage control to stations. Enemy has a four man squad, that is slightly concerning. You can be Sky, but not if you're on a squad of me. So that is fine. I'm planning to go to A. This is quite a bit of a slip ship, but yeah. Really nice. Hold your helm. I stay forth. Yeah, like naval is actually small enough that if you're playing, um, especially if you're not playing the stuff that's infested with bots, if you're all queuing at the same time, you might just end all in the uh, Port, all. in the same match. Just gonna turn left. Helm, midships. Helm, midships. Hawkins is a bit of a slow ship. Give Tapper a bit of room to actually make his turn. There we go. The enemy squad is being Paulas. Oh boy. That's what's being said, you know, Yep. Yeah. It happens far often enough in naval where you will see people of, of squadrons you recognize. At least if it's, as if it's an actual naval squadron. Although the actual naval squadrons tend to no longer play because of the bot spam. Full up here. Interesting. Yeah. From time to time. Why is my repair? Why is my fire extinction not automatic? And why is my repair automatic? Excuse me. Come on, there we go. Um. At Sky, do you really want to go there when there's a Des Moines staring down the channel? Target identified. Oh, there we have a Liverpool. That's one of that squad of four. I actually also really like the Liverpool. Although it's a 5 7 nowadays, isn't it? It used to be 5 3 in this, but this so good at 5 3. Mm, 
I think... Yeah, I'm gonna keep going forward because I'm not the only one in line of sight of that loser. Yeah, I just thought as much as that would be the Des Moines. However, at Des Moines you can ammo rack and he's real close. And the reload on the Hawk is actually really good for a heavy cruiser. 12 seconds? Although they're not proper 8 inch guns, they're still big guns. Also, there's like an actual human Des Moines, so that's dangerous. And my guns are not spanning him, I think. Oh, oh, that's perfect. Because he just exposed his entire ammo rack like that. Yeah, yeah, that's how it happens. If, if, oh boy. Yeah, if, if you already have a vulnerable ammo rack and you somehow beat yourselves, you are screwed. Because that just, that just exposes the entire ammo rack. Damage control to stations. That was lucky. Starboard your helm. I stay starboard. I'm going to keep going forward because I don't think A is too contested. Squad mates are fighting off the enemies near C. I think that four month squad is over there. Yeah. Like, again, the Des Moines is not a bad cruiser, but if you beach it and just three kilometers away from another cruiser, that's, yeah, that's not going to happen to you. It's, the Des Moines is kind of in the same boat as, as uh, Moffat, where it is a decent ship, it definitely is a good ship, but it gets, it's, it's so well known where the ammo rack on it lies that people just know how to sink it instantly. Speaking of Des Moines... This might be very bad if I don't amarack him quickly. Enemy listing and Damage control to firefighting crew. I can just get behind that island. I don't think the Hawkins has not, not quite the punch to get into the Amarak over the mine otherwise. No. Boy. So we're on no repair now and going straight for the cap. Dapper following me was a brave move, but probably not the best one. Especially when I'm taking fire from this British cruiser. But I think I'm out of line of sight for the Des Moines. I'm gonna repair the main guns. The kiln has vulnerable front ammo instead of rear, I don't remember. Something just blew up. Yep, 
something definitely just blew up. Be a good old hit again. Shells on Enemy and losing speed. That girl should be sinking. Yep, girl sunk. How close am I to the Lancaster? I can spawn the Lancaster, but with the Moina, but I don't really want to. So we're just gonna play this normally. And that cruiser has been sunk. Oh, there's an Eugen here as well. And an enemy aircraft up. An Eugen we can deal with even with these guns. So I think. Shells on target. Engines all stop. Shells on target. Yeah, I think these seven and a half inch guns just don't really have enough punch to punch through some of these armor belts to get into the magazines. But we can at least still knock out the crew compartment through the upper belt. That or my aim is just horribly off. some HE to deal with his threats. I should have held fire until the fire was out. Yeah, when I get sunk, I am spawning the Lancaster. Saturated as a whole, and I don't think I can ban the engine compartments. So we're just gonna try and knock out as many secondary turrets as we can. And knock them out that way. Which seems to be working. We have not enough crew, but that Oigan should be sinking now too. We'll see whether I'm gonna get the kill on it. No, a Lancaster. Spawn a bit low. But that's what we expected. That's a Helena in their spawn? No, that's, a De that's the Des Moines. We do not want to get anywhere close to the Des Moines. Because that will definitely shoot us down. That's a big old juicy cruiser over at sea. Another Des Moines, okay. I'll see what I can do. 
But if that thing as, as much as it looks at me, I'm dead. Is my intervention with this Des Moines needed though? That is the question. It's that brand of Lancaster behind me, so I am bombing the Des Moines. Bomb away. Because I believe the Des Moines is going to go forward. Yep. Oh, there goes my wingtip again. Oh no, oh no. Come on, recover. The mine is sunk. I'm taking a lot of the flak, so maybe Dapper can get his bomb off. That he did, he got the Savoya. Should be fine. We actually still hit, still have that wingtip. It hasn't been shorn off, torn off, or whatever. That's the Eugen I shot that way earlier. Finally sank. Uh, and I pretty much just have to get into the cruiser again, don't I? They have an Omaha capturing A. I'm just gonna get it back into a, a cruiser. Light cruiser! Ahead! Six thousand meters! There's any coma, okay. I mean, the Akuma is 5-7. But that's a bit of a shame since we just both lap our Lancasters. It would have been prime target for Lancasters. This really isn't a bad reload for a light cruiser, but it feels so slow to me. They've also made the engines on the Omaha smaller from what I remember. But that's been a while now. I'm overshooting him, and why do I keep doing that? But if he keeps repairing his, I should be able to win this. There we go. Yeah, well, the four man squad definitely doesn't help either. Because that is four guaranteed players on their team. They did have quite a few. Well, Phoenix got knocked out. That's not his fault. He knew the few. Repair parties, repair parties, begin damage control. Enemy aircraft up. This thing has VT on the secondary, so it's fine then. Target identified. 
Let's really let the main guns to VT as well. He's also doing the classical just pop up and down to dodge AA, but it doesn't always work. Launch my plane towards A because I don't think there's any enemies near A. Target identified. Light cruiser. Ooh, torpedoes, torpedoes, torpedoes. Uh, but it should be fine. Missing, da missing dapper. Now there is an enemy. Let's see, is there, is there actually one of line of sight on A? Can I capture an alpha with just a plane? A D cap would be pretty great as well. A full cap would be ideal. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to capture this. I'll try to play smoke. But it's not going to help much. Especially if you just bounce out of the water like that. Mm, boy. Come on, this plane specifically has rudders on the floats. So it should be able to turn pretty well in the water. There we go. We're in our own smoke. Come on. Hydroplanes do not have brakes. They are now capturing Charlie. Enemy listing and losing speed. Helm mission. Helm mission. Ah, direct hit. Most of the zones are under enemy's control. I did it. Hmm. Damage control to repair parties. Maybe that plane has a break. Not sure. Oh jeez, that thing was okay. Good to know that Leander loses crew that quickly. Seeing as, I, as I'm in one at the moment. Where am I gonna shooting? Roger. Sunderland. Still have this uploaded. I won't have time to actually hit it with a VT salvo. And Sky just got shot down before he could decap. So this is most likely gonna be game over. Light cruiser. Bearing six zero. Three thousand meters. Control to stations. Direct hit. 
Is it the Moin shooting me again? No, the Moin is beating so What is that? Moffat? Torpedo, torpedo in the water. Torpedo in the water. Tapper, you're gonna run into them. New point. You're just gonna... You might be listening to the stream, but you might not be. So we can mark it. Yeah, well. Game's over anyways. That was a fun battle. I could have imagined that an actually pretty decent map with a lot of cover and a team of actual players could result in a fun battle. Shame it was a defeat, but it was still a good battle. So one more. Yeah, one more and then we'll call it quits for tonight. South Africa, okay. Hmm, I might want to do PT boat spawn first. To try and capture some points. Secure the ship for sea. Engines, flank speed. Aye, stay starboard. Starboard your helm. Heavy cruiser. Ahead. I see an Emden, I see Action Station. Moffat's target identified. Light cruiser. Bearing. Two four zero. Nine thousand meters. Are we now? Seems we indeed are. I I wonder how some of these names actually get passed, you know. Anything. They have an hipper. Two hippers. Quite a few moffets. Yeah. Uh, I cannot. Sp I cannot capture the point. Not with that Moffat shooting me. Is there cover in the cap? Not really, but I'll try anyways. You say that, but I kind of want to cap it myself anyways. Because these bots, once they switch targets, usually don't switch back again. Unless they've lost their original target. Uh -oh. Yeah, no, I'm taking fire from that. I'm off with the damage. Supporter. Uh, Hawkins it is. Although with that many Moffats around, Leander would be better. It's not like I was smoked up anyway. Yeah. Try and get a revenge on this destroyer near Alpha, this cruiser. Although it'll take a while to get there. Target identified. It seems the enemy squad is a squad of German destroyers. I think it's quite unfortunate for them. Enemy hit. Yep, 
Yeah, the um, up tearing squad mates in naval, it does not really good. Well, also, this is a player. That is a player porter. Picking a fight with a cruiser, fight nothing but high explosive. Old. Especially exposing your rear turrets like that. I'm coming to a halt so I can better snipe his rear turrets. Or I can just completely annihilate his engine room, that's also possible. My rear turrets are not actually on target, uh, it doesn't matter. Wait, that's an actual emote now as well, the, um, the seal from the Russian Badger? That is amazing. Shooting in mass flank. Enemy aircraft. Airplane. Damage control to station. The guy's just way out there, so it doesn't really matter. Starboard, all. Part of starboard, aye. Helm. I have more than enough spawn points for the Lancaster if I sink again. But I'm not going to jar out my ship this time. Light cruiser, ahead! 6,000 meters! Starboard your helm! Aye, stay starboard! I really do like the 5-3 ships. They're often overlooked ships in Tech 3s, the 5-3s. Probably for a good reason, but on the other hand, they're pretty interesting ships usually. But I think 5-3 is kind of overlooked because you can get through them pretty quickly. Like, 5-0 is memorable because they're the first cruisers most people have. And 5-7 and 6 is pretty memorable because they're the top tier cruisers, so to speak. Whilst through 5-3 you just push through them. Begin damage control. Destroyer! Ahead! 5,000 meters! Target identified. Destroyer! Let's see if we can sink this American destroyer again. I'm taking damage from the am then I believe. I have no idea when you when you put a smoke guy. It seems we got the frontal rack on the summers. Port your helm. Target identified. Bomber. Bearing two four zero. Seven thousand. Fire spotted on the enemy ship. You know, sometimes when you're in a smaller ship than an enemy. 
you really should not shoot back. Especially when you're getting shot by other people. Just because you can shoot at a target bigger than you doesn't mean you should. It's also a really important thing to do when you're fighting battleships and you're not confident that you can sink them, don't shoot them in the first place. It's another story when you're in a battleship yourself, but if you're in a cruiser fighting battleships just try to not get their attention. Not again, Dapper. Not again. We got damage. Identified. Destroyer. I see a Moffat, or a Moffat shaped destroyer at least. Amden has turned broadside, so we're going to fire upon him now. I'm not going to shoot upon the reserve German unless it shoots upon me. Amden on the other hand clearly wants to fight with me, so I'll oblige and sink him to the bottom. Okay, that was a bad time to lose my bridge, I'm not gonna lie. gonna go straight through the cap but I, there's nothing I can do about it. Okay now my bridge is repaired. Second to the ship again. And my bridge got knocked out again. So I'm probably going to overshoot the gap again. Although I'm a lot slower in reverse than I am forwards. I think I'll stop preparing until I actually get the gap. Sinking, but we have Lancaster ready. I'm just gonna jail and get the Lancaster. Now, what will our target be? We 
We have one lone ship over at sea. We have an Eugen behind the island. Also, Sky, there's a lot of torpedoes heading your way. But you should be touching them, yeah. It doesn't really matter that we're losing sea. If anything, I kind of want to bomb the Eugen because there's another ship next to it. If that's actually an Eugen, I'm not sure. Udapter's coming in with me. Oh, where is he though? There he is. There are three ships right there. And I think that's two hippers, is it? Ooh, that's juicy. Will we have enough time though? And one of them is backing up. I'm going to go for the one that's going to beach himself, because that's an easier target. But I'm going to try and drop on the far side of him, because I think the other Oigan might be sailing past him with a bit of luck. Oh, come on, don't get shot down by 37s. We'll drop the bomb here. Because, yeah, the other organ is moving forwards and might get into the blast rages of my first bomb. Or my only bomb. Mm, uh, he's drifting into it. I'll definitely get one kill of it. Direct hit on that first one. Keep it up. Dapper should have a good run on the other one, but I think the tickets are going to... Yeah, the tickets are out before he can drop the bomb. No. But that was a good match as well. And I think a good one to end tonight with. Stream for 3 hours and 20 minutes, that's fine. Yeah, I know. Yeah, if I, if I tried to overshoot a little bit more, I could have gotten boat. Oof. Oof. But that is it for tonight. And I'll be seeing you again next week, Monday, where I'll be playing... something, I'm not quite sure yet. Either coastal or grinding blue water. Or whatever I think will be fun on Monday. But yeah. As usual, thank you all for watching and I'll see you Monday.